uh, online virtual events for the month of June, which we have titled Cost of Living Crisis, There is a Way. Amen. And um, I'm Pastor Vincent Lawal of Transformation Sanctuary International. And I've got a co-pilot who's almost as tall as, always. Who's almost as, tall as me today. I, I don't know what's happening there. Um, <laughs> do you want to introduce yourself? Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. You're welcome. Once again, to this virtual event, I am Victoria Lawal. I'm always the co-pilot. The co-pilot, yes, yes. You're welcome. Welcome on board. Welcome on board, my co-pilots. So um, today we're looking at a cost of living crisis. What on earth does that mean? Well, cost of living crisis, is there a crisis at all? Well, that's part of what we want to, that's part of what we want to discuss tonight. Um, but just in terms of introduction, so we are TSI, we are from TSI, Transformation Sanctuary International here in the United Kingdom, in Raynham, specifically in East London. So if you're looking for a spiritual church, it's just around the corner. Raynham's not far from anywhere in the UK. And we are committed, God has given us two key visions to work with. One is Victorious Living, and the other one is Christ likeness. Now, we pay a lot of emphasis because, of course, we know that's what will get us to heaven. So, lots of Bible study, lots of walk around preaching the word and all that. Very us. All of those things need to make us believers. So, we do a lot around that. And then, we also focus on victorious living. And someone was saying um, a few weeks back that one of the uniqueness of TSI is that everyone is in employment and good employment, and we are progressing. Everyone, from the pastor right to everybody, we are progressing. And that's because God has given us a mandate for victorious living. We want to see victory in every aspect of our lives. Now, on that basis, we then organize these online events where we tackle human issues. Because a lot of times we are praying, a lot of times, we are doing all the right things, but there are just a few actions we need to add to our prayers to make things work. You know, wisdom in scripture is the right application of knowledge. So that's what victorious living does for us. It gives us the wisdom to be what God wants us, what God wants us to be. And as a disclaimer, as we always do with all our programs, we have a disclaimer. We are not experts at everything. Oh, no, 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 we're not. Not at all. But... Through the power of research, through the power of knowing what is happening around, we can come together, discuss, and find solutions. Now, everything we're going to discuss today is not a legal or statutory solution. So you can't take us to court on this one. You cannot. We are just trying to help one another here. And we're not charging for it anyway. So you can't say we take us to court. We charge you, blah, blah, blah. And all that. So that's um, what I want to start us off with um, tonight in terms of who we are. So in terms of the plan, we're going to look at the topic itself, what it means, the impact um, inflation is having on us all, um, what God wants us to think about at such a time as this, and other practical solutions to reduce our expenses and increase our income, which is, the, which is the place where we want to be as Christians. We can then do more for God. So I hand over now to my co-pilot to take us to the next level. I think, uh, th thank you, Vincent, for that. I think I'm going to take a poke at him. You know, usually there is, um, there is this thing about when a pastor keeps saying tonight, tonight, it usually shows that they are new pastors because they only minister in the night, right? So, <laughs> where, this, where did that come from? Because, uh, so if it says tonight, just know that it's this afternoon it means actually. Ah. So, um, I've had to poke him a few times that it's, it is not night yet. Um, in, well, well, probably 4 p.m. in other places because there are people usually who log into our to our um, events from exactly. Canada, from all over the oh, world. 
So we could just say today, today. which means, you know, whatever time difference yeah. it is happening. So okay. just uh, when it says tonight, it doesn't actually mean when it's dark. Right. All right. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to say that. Okay. But thank you everyone who's joined us on Facebook, on Zoom. And like we normally do, we make this interactive as much as we can. Mm. And um, so that it is enjoyable for all and we all learn from one another. You know, Richard said something about research. Yes, we do a lot of research that goes into this, but sometimes some of these things is born out of experience. Yes. So things we have experienced, things we have uh, um, put in place, things we have worked on, and we feel, oh, actually, it's beneficial, and we can share it with people. So what we are looking today, what are we looking to address today? One of the things that we looked at is, yes, it's not a time to panic because there's, there's a provision from God. There is that God's sustenance in during inflation. There has been famine before in the Bible, mm -hmm. and it's like life is a cycle, and it keeps happening over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so we are, we find ourselves in such a time, and we're looking at practical ways to reduce our expenses. Um, now that you know prices have skyrocketed, mm -hmm. how can we actually reduce the expenses? and minimize you know the the, the impact of inflation on and, us and can i just say also, on that on the prices maybe somebody will be online today who would know somewhere where we can all is a buying things for 10 pounds you can get it for two pounds maybe you know somewhere and you'll be willing to share with us tonight so we can all start going there that's part of the reasons why we're meeting we're all going to come up with ideas on how to help one another so did you hear now again he said tonight <laughs> I caught you there. <laughs> anyway, the last one from me um, before we go, <laughs> as we move on, is the practical ways to generate source of income. So um, even as the Bible says, and as we all know, that you cannot put your bread in one basket or your mm -hmm. eggs in one basket, yeah. you, you spread it around. How can we generate more income? How can we get residual income? So. We know when you tune when you tune in, into the news most of the time is doom 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 doom. Bad news. Honestly, it's bad news. And our heart goes out to people who lost their lives to the earthquake. A lot, a lot, our heart goes out to people that does it. Was I think it was in Pakistan. Our heart goes out Afghanistan. Our heart go our heart goes out to people who lost their homes. The five million people in Ukraine who have been displaced. You know, no matter how we think these things are so hard, difficult. Things can be things are difficult, more difficult for other people, mm. and we need to always realize that mm. no matter where we That's are, right. honestly, mm. things are still difficult for other people. There are people who, who don't have a whole house or a home over themselves. Mm. So, and we're looking at so cost of inflation in UK. It has re not just in UK, all over the world is risen. But the statistics we're using today is the UK from the UK um, statistics which we know will be same in, in other mm. parts of the world. Yeah. And in May, in May I think the, the record shows 9.1%. Um, but before we go on, you know, we've been doing the talking, we want you to put on the chat or shout out to us, what are the, what, what is the impact of inflation on your everyday living? Please shout out or just put it in the chat in what way has it affected you please we want to know before we continue so we know we know we are on the same page so we've got yeah. inflation rising and we just want to know if that has had any impact whatsoever on everyone's daily expenses and daily living so anybody does anybody have anything to put in the chat or shout out or put on facebook on that Anywhere inflation has been affecting things lately? Anybody? Please, people. Oh, we need to we need to make this um, um, interactive. Come on. Ah, weekly Where shopping has increased dramatically. Oh wow, weekly shopping has increased dramatically. That's a conversation my wife always wants to have with me. Which, uh, mm, mm, yeah, okay, we're online, so I've got to be careful what I say, you know. And so, uh, do you know? Do, do you know? It was one pound last week. Now it's one pound 45. 
And it's just, I, I don't know if you, if you have noticed, yes, bills, more money goes on bills. I don't know if you have noticed that it's not just the price that's increased, mm. even the quantity as sometimes reduced. has reduced. Mm. Yeah, so Concept yeah, grams yeah, has gone down to 75. Of, yes, or sometimes one kg it's gone down to 9, 950 or, mm. or, or, or 850. Mm. But because most of the time when we buy things, we just rip the packaging open. But when you feel it, you think, oh, this thing is actually it's nice. feels lighter. Mm. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Increased bill. Increase bill pay. Ah. <laughs> we, have, we have somebody online who wants to go on strike here, it looks like. Um, <laughs> this sounds like the language of the, of the guys who who will strike this was real. Exactly. Increase bill, oh, wow. then pay is still the same. Ah, okay. So yes, increase bill, pay is still the same. Yeah. I've got one doing? here. Thank you so much. He says, as Facebook. this person is suffering from experience with children, so uniform and children's clothing has increased oh. compared with even a few weeks ago. Ah. And you know what? When people have younger children, you know they grow quicker. Very quickly. You know, and that's as she and trust is talking from experience. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. I, I, I love this one. I love this one from Justin. Less money for treats. Is there something still called treats? <laughs> is there some, you, you know, those those wonderful days when we said, oh, you need to go out, you know, and relax and eat in a restaurant. I don't know, does anybody still do that? Because uh, that has been off the menu for a while, um, somewhere close home. Uh, not in the house, of course, not, not, not in the house. Uh, we still go, when, when last did we go out on the street? And, and because- February 20. <laughs> <laughs> because they can't remember when last we went. I mean, Already 2020. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No. Okay. Fuel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuel Thanks. Cost. Yeah. Fuel yeah. cost. Petrol and diesel has increased more than 60%. That's very true. More than 60%. It's grown. Yeah. That, that's so, so, so thanks, thanks for all of that. So, grocery prices. Hmm. Petrol prices, as we've seen, I don't know about you. Yeah, we said gas and bill, yeah, energy bill has increased. Council tax keeps increasing and will continue to do so until we die. National insurance. You know, national insurance charge, yeah. Salaries not rising in line with inflation. Um, water bill has risen by an average of 1.7. I work, I work in a local authority. All rents across social housing has increased. All rents has increased. Rising interest rates every month now. For those who own mortgages, every month people are scared. Because once the Bank of England, I think you're going to talk about that. You're, yeah, you're going to talk about that anyways. And then mobile phones and broadband providers, yeah? Th things are things are increasing. Things are increasing, um, and so so those are some of the things we have seen and which we have which we have experienced. So clearly, we have an issue on our hands. We have a problem on our hands in terms of inflation and what's going on. I think you've got some you've got some data yes. around the national perspective on this, haven't you? Yes. So we we like we usually do. We don't just think, oh, we just want to do this. Like we said, there's a lot of research that's gone into it. Mm -hmm. And we usually try to show the national perspective or evidence from the national, picture. you know, yeah. national picture. And we will be sharing that. Um, just bear with us. We will be sharing that in a minute. Okay. And um, so I, I, I've got a short that's presentation nice. here. Mm -hmm. Which is the 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 inf that inflation has risen by like we said nine percent. So this this um, some of this information was gathered from either BBC Office Office of National Statistics. So you see some of it says ONS, which is Office of the National Statistics. Um, so inflation rose up to nine percent in April. I know as at, as at yesterday they they released a, um, a data set for May. And I think it's increased by 0.1%. And this, on average, really, you see that that inflation is going for in the last 12 months, on average, is by 2.5%. Okay. And what does that mean? It means, you know, price of things are getting higher. 
And like I said, this is the and ONS actually says that this is the highest recorded in the last 12 months. Go on, sir. So you can see that in a pictorial form represented in a graph, you can see there was a very high inflation in 1982. I pray that we don't get to that. Man, to that 18%. Um, 18%. Wow. But the, the one that's followed on from that is 1992. You know what I said that this thing is it's been like a cycle. Mm. But between 1992 and so for the last 20 years, it's remained steady. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. see. But in, in 2022, it's going higher. And we I'm, I'm from forecast, they did say it's going to go higher than that. Yeah. Um, mm. So, like we did mention, food prices continue to rise, particularly for bread, cereal, meat, different things, like we all know. Yes, this, Even the, fruits. The essentials. Yeah, the it's essentials. The, 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 things we can't, the things we can't do without, you know, that just reminded me of what we were discussing in Bible study on Thursday, that when we talk about the end time and part of the problems, there will be farming everywhere, bread will be so expensive, but then the more expensive stuff will not be touched. He said, don't touch the oil and wine. Yeah. But the what everyone would have to eat will increase in price. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and also survey shows that grocery has increased by 8.3% okay. over the last four weeks. Oh, wow. So between April and May. And this, that's the highest rate in 13 years. Uh, and usually, food, they did say it's, it's predicted that food bills are set to increase by 380 by per household mm. per year, depending on where you shop. So if you, I'm, I'm not here, it, it doesn't stipulate if you're shopping in Ocado or you're shopping in, um, Wait, in, Waitrose. in Waitrose or Tesco. Mm. So, but the average is meant to increase about 380 just on food. Next slide, please. Wow. So you can see the, the different things that have, that have increased, um, pasta, 16.1%, pizza, the meat, bread, the things we talk about. I think one of the things that was missed out here was the sunflower oil mm. that increased almost by 80% wow. as a result of the, the crisis in Ukraine. So we can see that there. Go on, so, so. Yeah, so oh, moving on sorry, to- on that, on that last one, I was just going to say, I didn't see pandemic increase. <laughs> so there might still be um, hope for those of us who are from that side of the world where we can, you know, turn things and eat, uh, hopefully the prices are, or, or, or does anybody know if the prices of pounded yam has increased to, um, what, what's rice on your list? What, what's I, rice on I your think list? Vincent, the thing is because um, we cannot represent everything on oh, this. Right. Okay. Trust me, the price of rice has gone up. Even oh, wow. the pound of yam, I guess is because most of the time now you've been eating a lot of salad. I'm sure that price has gone up as well. Trust me, it's all across board. Right. So okay. Um, okay. I think probably what I'll do when next time I go shopping, I'll take you with me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> May the Lord be merciful to us. All right. Amen. <laughs> Moving on swiftly, we see energy. Um, it's increased by 708. So from, and, and um, if, if you're a prepayment, so you, you buy your pay as you go, um, evidence has shown that you will be paying oh, almost seven, uh, approximately 700 more every year, wow. depending on how you use energy as mm -hmm. well. Now we're going to cover yeah. that entry. We are going to cover that. Okay. And of course, we've all been so far, most of people would drive. You've been to the petrol station. Yesterday, we were passing by Tesco and it showed 199.9%. And one of the things, 0.9p, and one of the things I said, I think I remember I said to you was, why didn't they just put it at two pounds? That's because two pounds. exactly, because yeah. that's two pounds. Yeah. But when you compare that to what we had last year, last this time last year, it was 125p. Um, mm. But it's, called, it's gone up, same as digital. Yes, go on, sir. thank you. I Broadband think, yeah, is yeah. another one that's increased. Mm. So if you're not sure, if, if you're paying by direct debit, you need to check how much your provider is charging you at the moment. Mm. All across broadband, BT, EE, Talk Talk, all of them, they've, they've actually increased their prices from about, I think about April, yeah, March, April this year. So you wanted to say something? No, no, it's okay. Yeah. yeah? So that's another one, broadband. Yeah, next. Um, yes, Bank of England, 
the the rates, the Bank the of England rate, rate yeah. has increased to 1.25. Yeah. And if inflation continues to rate and increase, it will increase for that, which means people who are on tracker and variable mortgage rates, it has increased and it will continue to increase as the Bank of England rate increase. I think Vincent mentioned council tax. Yes, council tax. An average band, which is a band D, is yeah. also increased by 67 pounds a year. So with that, with that Bank of England increase rate and the impact it's having on mortgages, you can imagine people who have mortgages and their mortgages are coming, they have a fixed term mortgage and it's coming to an end in maybe October, November. Now, for such people, although what they're paying right now is still the same, once that fixed term finishes, the amount they will pay will go right up, not to what they were originally told or what was originally agreed, but to whatever the inflationary rate is at that time. So you can imagine if you were paying a thousand or a thousand five hundred right now on your mortgage and the fixed time comes to an end, you could be paying as much as two thousand five hundred, three thousand, dependent on the level of inflation at that time. But there's something you can do about it, and we'll cover that also. Next, next slide, please. Thank you. So, with different prices, also that that that's not linked with mortgage mortgages and um, households. Yeah. Um, it's restaurant and hotel prices rose by it's risen by eight percent, and it will continue to increase. And we did say that other prices have. Been steadily increasing due to distribution uh, and issues. We know there were driver shortages. They were looking for HGV drivers um, due to Brexit, war in Ukraine. But even though all of this, I think that's the last slide. You can remove. You can take it out now. All of this is showing. Yes, it's increasing. It's showing. How can we do it? What can we do? But there is a way, and that's why we put all of this together. Well, that was just to actually evidence um, some of the what what the trend is nationally. Yeah. Over to you, Vincent. I think just on that on that last point. So when we're looking at reasons for the crisis, um, we of course, like you said, um, there's been issues around supply chains, um, commodity prices of everything is rising um, across the board. So um, the war in Ukraine. I think Ukraine is the world's greatest producer largest producer of wheat and sunflower, sunflower oil, oil gas and right yeah. now we we can't access that and all that because of the world there so again once there's a rise in demand and there's less supply prices will go up naturally um, the weather has had an impact um, the demand for oil has increased um, and i think we're being back for the support the government the provided <laughs> during the follow period during the COVID pandemic. So we're paying that back. All of those things which the government reduced, you know, they're taking out now and we're having to pay it back. And of course, shortage of staff in different sectors compounded by Brexit, whatever your thoughts are on that, whatever your feelings are, it's having an impact. And this is impacting on everyone because Everyone eats, we all have to eat the bread. Now, you might be in a position where you can afford it and it's not a problem, but there's some people who can't even afford, afford bread. But like we said, there is a way. way. And that's the key focus of this evening's, this evening's meeting. There is a way, especially if you are a believer, if you're a, believer, if you're a child of God, there is a way. And we're going to look at we're going to look at that very very briefly. Um, a, a scripture in mind comes to mind. A, a scripture in the Bible comes to mind, and that's in Genesis chapter twenty six. And that was the case of Isaac, who found himself in exactly the position we're in today. There was famine in the land, and the man looked at his situation. And he felt, you know what, I've got to do something about it. And I think he panicked. He looked at the situation, he, he panicked, and he packed his bags, and he wanted to leave. Um, 
I'm not sure all of us are that lucky. I'm not sure where if you, if you decide to pack your bags now, is it America you're going to go to or where? Prices are increasing across across board. The man wanted to run. He wanted to make a run for it. And you know, that has always been um, man's reaction to emergencies, isn't it? Fight or flight. Mm. You understand? You, you, you just want to pack your bags. Oh, something is not working in this relationship. Fight or flight. Oh, something has stopped working at work. Fight or flight. Oh, farming has suddenly happened. Fight or flight. But that hasn't always been the right solution. And what God did with Isaac was, God said, stop, don't run. Do what I say to you and you will be fine. Yes. You know, you, you know what? I, 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 I like that analogy of fight or flight mm. because it just brought to my, well, I just remember another man in exactly the same situation. His name was Elimelech. You know, there was famine in the land. So we can see that these things have been even before our own time. Correct. But what did he do? He fled. He fled. Yeah. And when he fled, what happened? He lost everything. He lost everything. He lost everything. And the guy who stayed back, just like Isaac Boaz, the guy who stayed back, prospered. Yeah. And that's the same with Isaac. So God said, don't run. Just do what I say to you. Do what I tell you to do. So in, uh, in, in Genesis 26, so I'll just read 12 to 14, three verses. He says, then Isaac sowed in the land. That was, was during the time of famine. Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year. It wasn't far. Same year, a hundredfold. Hmm. And the Lord blessed him. The, the man began to prosper, meaning he wasn't prosperous before. The guy was poor. The guy was suffering. The guy, the guy had it rough. But the Bible says the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flock and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Cost of living crisis, there is a way. What is that way? Number one, it is listening to what God is saying to us as believers in this season and doing it even when it looks absurd. Even when it seems like it's not the right thing to do because God holds the key to every season and he knows how to change every situation. You remember the widow of Zarephah, don't you? Yes, but you know what? One thing I want to point out from what you said is, sometimes the ideas will come to your mind, and you think, no, the, the market is already saturated. Uh, I yeah, can't do this, yeah, yeah. because everyone is into it. But if, if God is prompting your heart to do it, do it. Go for it. Because you know, I, I, I have friends that, it's in the in their prime that they started particular businesses, mm. and those businesses are thriving. Yeah, yeah. You know, so God might be telling you, you this is not a time. Thank you, thank you, Jennifer. God's provision is always that He will always give available. you something. Yeah, and He will want you to probably in the time in the time of famine, some people are making money. I was going to come to that. I was going to come to exactly so, that that if you study how the rich make their money, this is the time when they invest. So a time when everybody's being careful, a time when everybody's like, this money is not enough. We need to keep this aside. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. This is the time when they commit their monies to things because there's only one direction for things to go. This cycle will end and the rich will come out richer and the poor will come out poorer. So if we want change in our lives, we've got to listen to the Lord. Okay, Isaac sowed in the time of famine. That's what, tell me, Lord, what I need to do. What do I need to sow now when it's not enough? The money is not even enough to buy bread, and yet this is time for me to invest. But that's the way it works, because at this time, Prices will drop. I don't know if you've been following Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Prices have dropped significantly. 
significantly the Bitcoin, which once rose to 52,000 pounds. I think at the moment, maybe it's less than 20,000 pounds. It's dropped significantly. And those who now invest will see that change happen in future when the prices go back up and they will make their money on the back of that. So what we say, it's not a time to panic. It's a time to listen to what God is saying. He says, I'm the one who gives you power to make wealth. Yeah. It isn't like it's dependent on the inflationary rates in your society. He says, I give you the power to make wealth. So if you need to give to the Lord, continue giving. Be faithful in your giving. Be faithful in your service. This is my time to quit church. I'm like, no, no, no. I need to go get three jobs so I can make ends meet. No. God is the one who gives you power to make wealth. The widow of Zarephath, she was still helping people in her need. need, and she was sustained. Mm -hmm. That's something else God might ask you to do. Help those who are less privileged than you. Yes. So it's not enough for me and my children. That's the secret. To give at such a time as this is to begin to build wealth for you and your family and all that. So, that's the spiritual that's the before, spiritual aspect. before we before we um probably round up the spiritual aspect we know if you're a believer and if you're not a believer please you can speak to us after honestly there is hope in god there's no way we can talk about these programs even though even though there are things that happen in the society that we won't bring our faith into it yeah. faith has a lot to do with it the, the scripture says it is more blessed to give than to receive. And it says, if that gives to the poor, lends to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Which means when we, you know, you said something about, you know, giving out of our need. Yeah. That widow of Zarephath, she thought, how, what, what is le what's going to be last left in you know, the last meal? So if God is laying on your heart or speaking to you, you know, still bless people. This is not a time to hold back. Because the more you bless, the more you will be blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's so many examples of people in the Bible who had the time of famine. Look at that widow that blessed, uh, that gave the, uh, uh, was it the one that did a uh, picture of Elijah, the widow of Zarephath? That's the widow of Zarephath. What about the one, the woman with the jar of oil? You know, there's so yeah. many examples for us in the Bible yeah. that yeah. in the time yeah. of famine, that they did something and they got, they got the blessing. Exactly. And I think something else we need to take away, all of us, is we need to look inwards. What is the jar of oil in our homes mm -hmm. which God has reserved for such a time as this, which will multiply well to us? Because guess what? God is rich to all. And he has, as if everyone had a jar of oil, you have your jar of oil. I've got my own jar of oil. We all need to go, and that jar of oil is in our homes. You're not going out to buy it. It's there already. It's in your, for some of us, it might be some clothes in our wardrobe, which we need to flood now. eBay. And all that on eBay. Who no, knows? It, not it. it could be anything. It could be an idea you've been sitting on all this while. An online business, you've been like, well, oh, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Who knows? Find your jar of oil because the moment you start pouring, it's not going to stop until all your vessels are filled. Remember Isaac again? He began to prosper. Then he continued prospering until he became very prosperous. It's the same principle God will use with you. You find your jar of oil and you put it in Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I feel like, I feel like, I pray until tomorrow. Okay, now we will, so we've looked at the spiritual aspect, which is without God, we cannot achieve what we want to achieve. Okay. Because remember, he's the, he's the one that gives us power to live there. Okay. He's the one that gives us strength, even to get up in the morning, to go to work, to okay. do all the things that we need to do. So, we will be talking about, you know, uh, um, Things other that we, practical. other practical things that we can actually do mm -hmm. to actually reduce our expenses, like you said, increase our income, and I'm going to start on that. And my one of my questions, my my very first question is: When last did you sit down to do an income 
an expenditure, uh, uh, expenditure appraisal. Wow. When last? What does that mean? Income so, and expenditure, income and expenditure appraisal. appraisal. Usually, we think it's for people who sometimes, so when I was working with the local authority, when people are in debt, what, what, what we do is when they come to us for their advance, and we say, okay, let's look at your income, what you are bringing in, and let's look at what, what, oh, what you are going to. So, and, and most of us, especially because now with the, with the um, COVID, what we do is our card, our credit card, our debit card is increased by the, um, what, what is that? The, the one you don't put the pin in. Yeah, um, contactless, contactless is being contactless. increased to 100 pounds. Mm. So what do we do when you grow up? Team, 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 that's just what we do. Have you sat down to actually say, you know what? Let me look at my income and let me look, let's look at how I'm going. Mm. Have you looked at that? Do you go out shopping and the things you don't prepare to buy because they are, because they are out there? Oh, I think I need this, I'll buy it. I think where we need to start from, every one of us, is to look at our income and to look at our outgoing. Mm. If our outgoing is more than our income, then we need to look at how, where do we need to, you know, try to meet this so that it will, our expenditure is actually made to be less than our income. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Because income, uh, no, okay, sorry. The, the more you spend, the, 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 the less um, ability to save, mm -hmm. right? And we cannot mm -hmm. just, we cannot just keep, you know, eating Same. everything that comes in. So we need to look at that. Second, we do have anything to say. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we need to look at our credit card interests and, 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 and credit card interest. One of the things I do or that we do most of the time, if my credit card, if the interest um, on it is, if the interest span on it is coming to an end, I do a balance transfer to another credit card that has zero interest for another 24 months. So you can see, I'm not talking about money transfer, I'm talking about balance transfer. Because money transfer means you're getting money from your credit card and you're putting it into your current account to spend, and it comes with a bit of interest. But when you are doing a balance transfer mm -hmm. from a credit card that has interest to another credit card that has 0% interest, he actually saves you money every month. So, yeah. so let me, let, let me, let me, let me put that in a concise way to you for So the first one we said, don't panic, but as a plan. Yep. Second one we said, find a jar of oil. It's in your house or your room. You need to find it to make money. But one now, they say there is no reason why you should be paying interest from your credit card. Because with the right balance transfer, you can always get, of course, you pay your credit card bills. Please pay, please pay, 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 pay the credit card bills, but don't faithfully stay in the Credit card. Tesco. Tesco credit card because oh, oh Tesco. I just like the color. No Tesco credit card. No, 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 no. Let go of the color. If they're charging you if the interest, if the APR and our APR is high, you can do a balance transfer to another card, which will be zero percent for X number of months, and then within that period, you pay the main credits. Rather than having interest at all. Yeah. Especially, like you said, uh, especially with those with very high APRs. There's some credit cards that are very high, and people get a lot, a large yeah. uh, amount added every month. Every month. Which means that, you know, e that every month it's, it's something else you are. And you know what they want is they often don't even tell you. They add it 15 so, pounds, 25 pounds. Yeah. 100 pounds, it just goes on the credit card bill. So they tell me your bill is 1,400, but they don't tell me that it added 100 pounds last month. That's why you need to invest in 0% yeah, Remember my student loan? Your student loan. I, student loan, I paid that on the same. I paid almost over, I think about 1,000 pounds. More, within 1, about five, five months or eight months, five months or six months. 
And when I checked, I thought, oh, it would have gone down. I didn't know it was, it looked like uh, I'd only paid the interest. Yes. So what, what did I do to that student loan? I transferred it from that particular, uh, 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 I got um, a loan to pay off the student loan, and then I transferred that to, to another credit card, which is a, a 0% interest for a number of months. So there are ways we can walk around this thing that we will help, definitely help us to reduce our outgoing. You know, I mentioned something on, um, on income and expenditure. When last did you look at your direct debits? Because sometimes some subscriptions or some providers would have increased your direct debit without informing you. Mm -hmm. Or they may just send you a letter and you close, oh, this is going to increase in March. And you wouldn't know how much increase that is. So one of the things you need to look at is look at your direct debit yeah. and see, am I paying the right amount or am, am I being charged more? Okay. You want to say something? No, no, no. Yeah? Oh, yeah, so next one, which I love, and, and I know a lot of us did that during the during the pandemic, but now we have started eating that. It's all cooking. When you cook at home, if you are somebody who loves cooking like me, I love cooking. But even if you don't, I think that there is that evidence. Research has shown that when you home, when you cook at home, one, it's more nourishing, and two, it saves you more money. Yes, we can have the usual treats every now and then, um, like we had on the 14th of February. Um, 20, 2020. 2020. <laughs> home cooking will save you a lot of money. Yes, so, and I think moving on swiftly from that, if you have anything, please put it in the chat. Any ideas um, on how to save how money? How to save money around the house. Reduce expenses, you know, All right, so I'll, I'll pass it back to you to talk about things we can do around the room as well. Funny. Right, okay, yeah. So, um, so, I know my wife has an app called Price Pie. Is it Price Pie? Or, or what, what's that app where you compare prices before you go to the price file before you go to shops to buy. So sometimes there are things you use regularly at home. You might want to target buying them when there's a price reduction when they're doing sale of it. So you can buy in bulk and then keep it and use it over time. Now I'm told you to store things in the freezer that actually it suspends the expiry date. I don't know about that, but I want to do your research into that. But buying things in bulk, sometimes the things that you use when the price is reduced can actually help. Um, your bills at home could be higher or lower depending on your lifestyle. You know, some of us have got remotes for lights. We've got, oh, you've got to record your future TV on standby because you've got to record that love I like. Oh. Um, but whatever you record, remember these things eat away at your electricity. It does, and it costs you more in the end. When you are washing, when you're washing, actually washing at lower temperatures, save you more money than if you're washing at high temperatures. Um, Unplugging your devices, switching things off, your TV, tablets, phones, you know, and all that. Bridget does advices that I will say you could try pounds if you unplug, if you unplug things. You know, my, 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 my little son, God bless him. Uh, he carries a charger with him. You think he needs to charge himself? He carries a charger for whatever is a point. When he carries he can the charger around. in the pocket around the house. And I'm like, why? People who work in emergency services, they carry phones, not the charger. He carries the phone and the charger around the house. Um, replace your boiler if your boiler is old. It's one of the key years best to replace it. There are more energy efficient boilers out there. When you're boiling water, my wife still reminded me of this like three days ago. Boil the water you need for a cup of tea, not for a jug of tea. You know, some of us will boil the full kettle 
just for one cup of tea. You know, and, and in saying that, the research has actually shown that when you you should not reboil the water you have boiled before first time, yeah. the first time. The, the, there is a, a bit of research, I think it's the research is still ongoing, that when you do that, it's, it's part of, it causes cancer. I don't know how true it is, but there, there is that research going on that when you when you fill your kettle, you boil it the first time, you take only a cup out, and then you reboil the water again, that it's not, it's not health, uh, it's not beneficial to health. Mm. And like I said, there, there are a few things around the house that, that very that consume a lot of electricity. Yeah. One of which is iron. When you do ironing, so of course we have, we, we love to iron. Then microwave. When you do when you when you microwave food, I don't know if you um, for, for us at home we have what we call a smart monitoring meter. So when they installed our smart meters, they gave us this small meter that. You can see, you can track your the energy you are mm, using. Yeah. And most of the time, I noticed that when the kitchen is on, so most of the time when we are home and we're just walking and we have our laptops on and all that, it's on green. But once you switch on the kettle or the iron or the microwave or the, the washing machine is still, is still minimal, it just goes straight to red. Mm. So which means that when you keep boiling, a, a, a full kettle for just one cup of tea. You're wasting electricity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And British, I know Britain is not putting prices to this. It says if that can eat itself, say the 55 pounds a year, mm -hmm. depending on how, you know, some of you are British, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are tea lovers. I am not. Um, but I need to boil kettle every time. So it's just to be mindful, okay. mindful of these things. And I know I, I have a, one of my very bosom friends, mm -hmm. she's online. Um, and I remember there was a time she used to she used to make fun of me when I tell the children, oh, you need to switch off. So once you leave the room, you, you need to switch the lights off there. And and research has shown that actually that that saves you money. It may be mean, it may be very minimal, yeah, uh, but it still saves you money. Mm -hmm. When you are in the room, switch off the lights there. When you are during winter, we are coming to winter months now. If you are not in a particular room and you're not going to sleep in that room. So long the radiator there or, or reduce the, the temperature. Research shows that that saves you money. Sorry. Yes. Um, I'm going to say Jennifer puts it on Facebook. It says try to avoid using your oven and use an air fryer. I think that makes perfect sense. Thank you, know? you Jenny. Don't, 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 put, don't put just one little chicken pie in a whole oven. Sure, sure. Thank you, sure. Jenny. Maybe this will maybe this will encourage my family to get their fryer because they don't want air fryer. Yes, yeah, so we use the oven. So thank you. I'm taking that on board. Thank you. Yes, go on. Uh, next time, Jennifer, uh, think twice before you put air fryer on on, on, on the thing here yeah? because uh, yeah, yeah. Just the thing. right. So moving on, uh, use the weather to your advantage. When you know it's going to be sunny, it's going to be sunny. Wash your clothes then. You know, it, it just helps instead of using a tumble dryer. Um, I know people still have dishwashers in their homes. I've always thought that's not true. My children never believe it. They always like, why can't we get a dishwasher? And I'm like, your hands save electricity. You know, your hands can save electricity too. So if you've got young children, you don't need a dishwasher. Yeah, Teach them to wash. It helps save electricity and it makes them more responsible too. But please, if you can afford it, please go, go on ahead. I know, I know families. <laughs> okay, okay, good fine. Okay, <laughs> so if you can afford it, we're talking about mortgages and credit cards. Ah, one thing about mortgage: a friend of mine whose mortgage, whose time mortgage was coming to an end at the end of the year, was so scared. He was like, "Oh, with the interest rates rising now." By that time, I'll be paying maybe a thousand pounds more, two thousand pounds more, until he found out that actually, once your market, your fixed time has six months left on it, you can strike a new deal now so that then you don't pay the current rate, you pay the rates now. So basically, if you strike it, if your market comes, your fixed time comes to an end in December. 
because it's six months to December now, maybe next month, six months to December, you can strike a deal with a mortgage provider, which will be valid for six months. So that come December, instead of you paying the current interest rates at that time, you can pay what the deal you'll be able to secure six months before. Now that's really, really key. That's really, really important. If you don't want your variable rate to be a shocker when your fixed term comes to an end. So that's really, really key. So please think about that and advise people around that. On your insurance, please don't do auto renew. Auto renewal on insurance customer. Guess what? Faithfulness pays in church. It doesn't pay with people who you pay money to. That's what I found out. It pays in church. It probably pays at work. But anyway, you are paying money to shops, insurance, whatever else you are paying in monthly cost to, faithfulness seldom pays. They will have great deals for new people joining them, and they will have crap deals for those who have been faithful to them over the years. So what do you do? Confuse.com. Yeah. Well, I think you know, you know, talking about faithfulness and you know, to some of these um, insurance companies and all of that. I don't know about you, but I guess it, it's just that little work that you need to, little effort you need to put in. It. You know, when you don't have the auto renewal, every auto renewal from research is always higher than the previous year. Yeah. And it's always higher compared to market prices. So usually, once you know that, if you know your insurance, probably home insurance, car insurance, it's coming to an end. Probably you can, you can, uh, what I do is I put it on a reminder a, a month before and I start shopping around. When you go to confuse.com, they already have your data set. Everything is there. Money supermarkets. Once you, once you register, register, they have your data set. So when you go back, what they ask you, has anything changed? So you don't have to do that whole, you know, putting in your, all the information again. It is always good to, sh just to shop around. Just the same way we do with the groceries. Mm. We shop around. Yeah. Sometimes, as they might be having uh, sales of particular items for school, that's what might be having, you know, uh, uh, next week. Shop around, we do. We all have good, you know, let's always compare. The more you compare, the more the more value for money. You know, I work, I work in procurement, so I know what market engagement is. You know, you, the more you compare, you shop around, the more money you save. You might not look, you might not look like you're saving a lot of money in the short term, but over the over longer time, term, yeah. you save you save quite a lot of money and you get money from the exactly. market. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was smiling, I was smiling the way because um, there's this 20 things that let you ask that sales, which you will never find. If you go at normal times. So you've got to type the right time to go. You get those 20 piece spaghetti. And when you get them, you load your house with benefits. You buy 10, 20, and all that. Load it at home, like somebody did. And you know that you're sorted for spaghetti for the next God knows how many months. Let me tell you a little uh, story about this spaghetti. Is that in a book here? Yeah? No, 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 no. I'll tell I'm you. Not I don't mention names. I'll tell you a story about this. I normally buy Italian spaghetti. So one of the days we ran out, and I go into Asda, and I saw the, the brand spaghetti. Asda brand spaghetti. So I bought it, and honestly, it was 20 feet. So I bought, I bought it, and then the children put it. And then they said, oh, mom, this doesn't taste different from the normal Italian spaghetti. I said, oh, really? So I went in and then I bought a lot more. And since then, I've been buying the 20p instead of the 80p I used to buy. So that's that's the story about the spaghetti. Right. Okay. So so that's another tip there. Yeah. Know when to go in. You need to have the time you want no. to get the spaghetti because it's not always there when you go at normal times. So it's a target time. I know that. Don't worry. You can send a private message, you tell me the target time if you're interested in that. Let's move on. To save expenses, I've fallen in love with my Oyster card, and I'm not in love with my car anymore. We divorced. My car is out there. I'm not interested in it. Why? Because square rates are so expensive. For Oyster, I know they're not going to increase prices until next year. 
So I can still work with the prices I've got now. So if your trip to work is less expensive than driving to work, I mean, you have been driving for so long, you're so used to, you don't like the smell of the BLI or the crowd on the C2C or the people on Greater Anglia, man and woman, please get an oyster and get working. Get active. There's some shoes now, some really, really nice shoes. I really, really designed for walking. You'll be comfortable. I will save you money. And that's something, that's something, that's something we done. We did something recently, and my wife got me sketches, you know, and she was pointing out that we had no money for almost like continue working. It's saving us money. We've got no money for So, yeah, so. And, and one of the things that, of course, everybody is there is um, physical, um, you know, we're all looking after our physical health. Yes. I think it was quite a couple of months ago last year, is it here? We did Peter Healthier and Peter Healthier Happier. Happier. Mm -hmm. There is what we call endocrines, which is released when you do exercise. Yes. You know, they, they, they're called hormones. And if, if you are, even if you want to drive to work, at least those shorter trips, so you are going going somewhere just to get something, walk down mm. or cycle. If there, there are people who you know, you just cut a bus, not sure. I found 52 is this. I said shorter, shorter trips. Yes. Okay, shorter trips. Well, so what well, I am well, I'm encouraging is let's get out there. If you are just going down the road, five minutes, ten minutes away, if the weather permits it, you don't need to drive. Mm -hmm. Especially walk, get fresh air, you know, and then you're still saving money instead of driving, driving your car. And the other thing you want to mention, I know a lot of us, honestly, and I'm I love it as well, I love to work from home. Because working from mm -hmm. home gives me time to stay a little bit longer in bed mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. But remember, it, it's okay now, but then when you get to winter months, that you have to put up your home, you need to have to, to probably do an analysis. What is more, what is cost efficient? Mm -hmm. What is the efficiency here? Is it going to work? Is it the travel cost? Or is it you putting up your home? Because remember, we are in, we're in summer now, and the average uh, uh, energy life is risen by almost 708. It is actually when we get into that winter month that will that the we feel the pain of, of, of the energy crisis. That's uh, so you need to evaluate. If I go to work, remember, either it's one person I work for two people, your employer will switch on the electricity like, eating anyway, they will switch on the energy. So should, should I pass that to my employer or do you want to stay at home and continue working? That that I hope I hope you're finding some of these things, some of these things useful. Um, another one we thought about was reading in a compulsive buy habits, you know. You just get into the show, buy things you didn't plan for, or you know, some people say anytime I'm angry, you know, I just go on Amazon and I just shop. I just go into the shop and I just spend. Anytime I'm angry, I just spend. I think. I'm going to say that person I need to be that spot. I'm not going to say it because we are online, you know. So, reigning that compulsive spending habit on anything, it's got to be thought through. You've got to keep an eye on what's coming in and what's going out. What about your phones? What about uh, phone, phone contracts and all that? Do you still have to pay £67 a month? For phone, for sky, and all that, you know, you work 12 hours a day and you're paying 60, you're paying 42 pounds. I don't even know how much to pay for sky and I know that you're paying 50 pounds subscription mm -hmm. for sky, 12 hours out. You only work when you're eating dinner for one hour, 30 minutes, one hour. What's the point? I know that we need to think about. We need to think about these things. So, can, can I put a caveat to that? It's not about not having sky or not having my phone because we do, right? But look at the, no, 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 no we don't have sky, I said Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So, because we do, I said Netflix, we do, right? But we don't have sky. 
because most of the time we don't even watch TV during the week, anyways, we only watch weekends. Um, but what, what, what we are talking about is look at that the cost you are spending on that subscription. Is it adding value to the time? Is, is it of value or benefit to that time you spend watching it? Mm. Right? So if, even if you are going to have Sky, what are the other um how do we call it? What are the other alternatives, alternatives within even with Sky? What are the other packages? Sorry, that's what I want to do. What are the other packages we have that will still give you benefit? And value for money instead of just paying, just to pay the subscription yeah. every month. The other one is gym membership. A lot of people pay for gym membership and they don't go. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's What's true. the point? I think for some people, I think it's a fact. It's like, I, I, you know, I belong, I belong to the gym, you know. And the only time you hear them talk about gym is when they go once a month and say, oh, I've been to the gym, you know, I was at the gym. Maybe they're talking about two weeks ago, I was at the gym and all that. Please, you can save money on that. Instead of that 35 pounds or whatever amount you pay a month, and it might draw you in and you give 10 percent discount and all of that. Please review that. Whatever you see in the gym, you can do it well. Some people can do it in their houses, walking, cycling, all of that can be can be alternatives, alternatives to that. So that's what thinking, that's what thinking about. Now, um, any questions so far? Any questions, any thoughts, any comments, anything you feel we've left out? If you got one or two things um, available support from the government and then how we can increase our income. If you got those two to cover, but is there any question? Is there anything you feel you have been doing to save money, which um, will be of benefit to the rest of us? Please put it in the chat, either on Facebook, or on Zoom, or you can shout it out another idea on Zoom. What have you been doing to save money lately? If you have been saving money at all, um, or are you just out there hoping that your family will strike um, so that <laughs> you can get a pay rise? Is that is that your strategy out of is that your strategy out of this? If there's anything you've been doing. Please put it, please put it in the in the chat now. Okay. Remember one of the things we said is yes, we've done a lot of research and we are also talking from experience, but we are not experts. Um, so we won't say we know it hundred percent. So if there are things, one of the things we think is we hope that you are finding you have, you have found this useful. And also if you are doing something in particular that is actually saving you money or of or, or, or generating more income please feel free to put in the chat so that we can share with everyone okay. on the platform i think therapy just put one in there first day oh, oh, oh okay. wow actually we've got a few things here oh, wow. Wow. you can only buy things uh depending on the priority so again yeah, that, that's really in a compulsory buying um plans we can buy things yeah um based on our priority which are priority for the things that we buy that dress which is on sale do you need it you know that and for men you know, i would say as women have their dresses so we have their toys you know that that, that gadgets that gadget that you see that you love do you really need to but tell me, when people renew their contracts, and last year, year before, they got iPhone 12, iPhone 13, and now they want to renew, and you're going to be given another phone. And I'm wondering, what happened to the phone you got two years? No, 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 no. I, 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 I have a friend who got a new phone and sold the other phone. Oh, so yeah, okay. so it, it meant, yeah, so that's, that's so maybe that's 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 okay. Anyways, we've got here first day shopping in most shops is discount day. Wow. I didn't know that. Wow. Thank shopping you. moves to Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> that's it. That's that's an actual point for us to take away. Yes. Shopping moves to yes. first. Shopping moves to Thursday. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks you. for that. Thanks for sharing that. Please, if you have any other ideas on how to reduce expenses. Please share it now. Share it with people. Just put it in. 
from the charts, please. Well, Thank you. So as we're doing that, what's the support the government is putting in place for people for such a time as this? Yes. Can, can I just say with government support? So one of it is the council tax rebate. So I I I was I had a chat with someone recently and I said, Oh, I did claim your council tax rebate. And the, the person answered, said, Oh, is it for everyone? You're thinking, what planet are what planet are you from? You know, so it's just people are not sometimes people are not aware that they can benefit from this and it's not dependent on your income. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, and just another one. Yeah, I believe this research also says using the washing machine at 7 p.m. upwards and at 30 degree is energy efficient. I don't need to wash in the night. Washing <laughs> in the night from 7 p.m. is energy efficient. And I think somebody also said if you buy, like if you're traveling abroad and you buy your tickets. Like, is it Tuesday night they call it? That Tuesday night you actually get a good deal compared to other nights. So again, something to take away. When do you wash in the evenings? Don't wash during the day. Leave it to the evening wash and all that. Okay. Thanks, Ariane, for that. Creating a spreadsheet of your income and expenses so it forces you to think of what. You should cut off what you want to keep and what you should cut off. You know, some of these things might be slightly painful for some of us who are not used to oh, we're typing up bread, uh, milk, and all of that. Most of these things you only need to do it once and then update it as you go along. So, yes, actually creating an income. This is the money which comes in. Usually, that's easy. What's that like? Expensive, these are the expenses, these are the things that are going out. Having that and then comparing the two really, really helps. And if you're a couple, if you're a couple, it's good to discuss it. It's good to discuss it. This is what's coming because sometimes you might have two separate visions on how to spend money, depending on how you manage your finances at all. Anyways, you might have two different views and it's coming to an agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, I always say with couples, it's either you go all put the money in the pot, everything goes in the pot, and then you spend also an agreement, or you're spending yours and she's spending hers, or you keep your money, but you put a portion of it in the pot, or each person is responsible for separate bills. They're different ways. There's no one set way of doing this when it comes to Office coming together. What's important is that there's an agreement around who does what. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so thank you, Vincent, for sharing that. I think one thing we need to learn from as well is when I take my husband shopping, whoever my husband is, mm -hmm. the things that are not on the list should not be taken from the shop into the basket. Um, so now that we are learning, sure. now we should go with shopping list sure. and stick with that shopping list, then that should happen to us as well. Thank you. You can continue. Surely the man must be paid for his efforts. <laughs> you know, when you carry the basket, surely something must, even the Bible says, after you have suffered a while, God will say to you, this is it's not in the Bible. So there has to be that settlement which just comes to you. Okay, now that I'm out here, I feel this one. We'll talk about that one. Okay, we'll talk about that offline. Okay, so go back. Take to your shopping list. Okay. Maybe we should stop taking the new shopping list. Okay, government support 150 that pounds um, cancel that in bit. Please claim yours in the comments. Sorry, that, that applies to everyone yeah. within council tax band A, A to D. D. No matter where you live, if you are within, so you can, when you go on your council website, check if you are eligible for that 150 pounds and it's a one of payment. So check, please check if you're eligible for it. If you're in E to F, I think it doesn't apply. Yes. A to D, we'll get that 150 payment. Uh, one of and we are not paying it back. Exactly. I think the government just feels if you are buying E to F, you won't even need the 150 anyways because your house is really, really large and you, uh, you have enough means to pay. 
There's going to be a 400 pounds energy bill grant, which will be given to all households this autumn. The government makes these things available, but they don't promote it. They just say it's there, they don't promote it, so you can claim it's fine. If you don't, the money is diverted elsewhere. So it's important that you know that. So that 400 um, is like the 150 pounds. So you get, it's a, initially it was meant to be a loan, the grant, but now the government will not be taking that. And it's for all households, all as long as you, you have the right to live in the UK. Okay. So, and then uh, good news for those on pensions or those on benefits. In fact, one of the arguments in the House of Parliament right now is because inflation is rising and benefits and pensions are tracking inflation, it means that the government is paying out more to those who are on pension or to those who are on the who says you pay to drive, but you don't find that in our societies. But other sectors are now complaining that salaries are not increasing, but pensioners are getting more money, and people on benefits are getting more money. So there's an argument to be had there. But if you're on benefits or your pensionable age, and you've not seen an increase in your pension, you mm -hmm. need to be asking the right question. Something is not right there. The government wants to pay more. And for them also, there's going to be a 650 pounds cash payment in two installments for those on pensions. Um, I think um, yeah, there will be one paid the next month, one will pay next month, and one will pay in autumn. So if you have elderly parents or pupils you know are on pension, please just let them know about this that there is apart from the 150, the 400, there's going to be another 650 pounds that will be paid by, the, by government to people. Wow. Yes, and apparently there's another 300 pounds winter fuel payments for those of pension age also. And those of disability benefits also get a million. So all of these monies are there, but it's only given to those who know that they're there and those who claim. Okay, so we've talked about how God will assist us. We've talked about practical ways to reduce our uh, expenses. We just need to briefly talk about how to increase. We've talked about government support. The last thing we need to look at as we begin to round up is what can we do to increase our purchasing power? What can we do to increase our income? And, and we're interested in knowing what people think. So at such a time as this, what can we do to increase our income. So one is to reduce our expenses, mm -hmm. but the other one is also to increase our income because we're looking at income and expenses here. Does anybody have any ideas around what we can do to increase our income? I know that if you have an idea, please put it in the chat on Facebook and on, and on Zoom, or please feel free to shout it out anyways. What can we do to Increase our income. Uh, income. Um, I think whilst we're waiting for that, I, I mentioned one already. Um, I mentioned what I said we need to sell whatever we are not using. We, we, some of us have things in our house, in our homes, that they, they're just cluttering up the whole place, and we need to we, we, we just need to plug them. Some of us have them now. Uh, you, you got that treadmill, and the last time you were on it was 1999. You know, it needs to be sold. It just keeps on eBay, send it off. And it's not just eBay. Um, recently, I find Facebook market very easy to put things on. And I know eBay normally charge, um, and there are other platforms, there are various platforms. There are some platforms to sell to clothes. I know, I know there was one to person mentioned. So please, if you can put down the chat for me. Um, I know there's one that you you, you, you sell your clothes and you, you can buy vintage. clothes and it's just clothes. Vintage. Yeah. But not just vintage. Uh, but vintage is one of them. Vintage is one of them. eBay is one of them. But one of the things I found lately is when you have bulk care items. So I we recently sold our um, treadmill 
because we noticed that most of the time they like to go out on the wall or we do cardio exercises, so we were not using the treadmill as we do. So I sold it, and I saw we sold it higher than the price we bought it. Yeah. So even though we've used it for quite so sometimes you just need to do the research that what obtains in the market and you put your price higher. And for one thing, I found with Facebook market is because it's local to you. People can easily pick up items from you without having to post. Right. So if you have bulky items, we looked in our shed a few weeks, a few weeks ago, and we said, oh, we're not using this, we're not using, and I put them on Facebook market. And some of them were bought. But with Facebook market, most times you don't have to pay a final selling fee yeah. to anyone. Yeah. With eBay, you have to, and probably other platforms. Yeah. So that's one thing I find with Facebook. There's so many other ones there. If you are not using it, take you know it's not it. Exactly. Especially, you know, um, like the major sister Jennifer, the other children, they go out of they go out of their clothes quickly. You sell it. People are always willing to buy, especially when it's in good condition. Yeah. They, they are willing to buy second hand. Yeah. Um, right. yeah. mm. yeah. Okay, so there's that. So just mentioned the pop for clothes. Yes. So oh, the pop. You. The pop for clothes. E -E Please check it out. Check it out. You might have some nice, some nice clothes where um I my, 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 my wife sold some clothes recently for some for some vacation attended. I'm going to a college. I don't know when she's gonna wear them. I don't know in college have to sell up those with those clothes on the pop. I sell them on the pop. And this one is what okay. Um Employment, training, education. We have to continue to evolve and improve. Society pays on the basis of the value you add to whatever you do. Not on the number of hours, not on how hard you work. Society only pays for the value you add to what you're doing. That's all it pays for. That's all it's important. My boss at work earns a lot of money. Not because he knows, because he doesn't. I tell you. But because of the value he brings in terms of connecting the dots and speaking the right things in the right places. That's all. So let us in. So we said at the start, we invest. Part of that investment has to be that continuous development. It's very easy to think that taking two jobs, as they do in America, will increase your income. In mind, the tax man in the UK is wiser than the one in America. The tax man in the UK will take more. Than you. you know, I did the recent election count, and I was paying the hundred and the paltry, paltry one hundred and seventy-five pounds. And initially, it didn't show on my pay slip. It wasn't there because it came separate. And I was so happy. I thought I'd escape the tax man. Guess what? I got a letter from HMRC saying, we noticed that you didn't pay all the taxes for last year. So we're charging you 70 pounds out of the 175. And we're going to take it over 12 months. I was angry, really. How much was the money? You know? So please let us continue to invest in ourselves. Don't go fly instead of going for two jobs. Spend that time adding value to yourself. One of my one of my child, one of my sisters, and she's she's on like she's listening to me. I'm sure she won't mind me saying this. From the moment she started her career, it's just been adding value, going back to you. Adding value step by step, increasing in value. That's what we need to be doing. If you're going to increase your income, instead of thinking of two jobs, think of adding value that will give you the same amount of money for less amount of hours at work. Yes, yeah, thank you. And, and, and just on that, I think, value, um, like Mr. We see most of these for the senior directors, executives, sometimes they don't do the because the, the menial jobs, what they are paid for yeah, is, their, is their strategic thinking. Yeah. The more strategic you are, the more you are paid. Yeah. 
which means you don't have to take two or three jobs and be in that minimum level for having value. And having value is not just going back to university. You can do accreditation courses. You can do some people would rather not go to university to get a degree. But when you start doing all those other courses that will have value in mm. what you do mm. mm -hmm. and improve your skill set, yeah. then that in itself will make will, will open more door mm -hmm. uh, 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 for you to, mm -hmm. to get into. Exactly. So it's not in the, not the number of hours, it's not in the number of jobs, it's, it, it's in your skill set. Mm -hmm. What have you got to do? Yeah, and you know something just came to mind as you were saying that, and it's the fact that when God then says go for it. Please go for it. Some of us are still living in fear. Some of us are our own greatest inhibitors. We are the ones God is saying, You are ready. Go for it. But we are, I say, uh, Maybe I don't fit in. Maybe they don't like my face. Though. Nobody came to the earth with the experience of being a director or a chief executive. Nobody. Everyone got an opportunity at some point. Please go for it. At such a time as this, go for it. Apply for it. Learn what you need to learn so that you can also be part of those people who earn good money. Who make decisions. Who make decisions. You are part of the decision makers and you are being paid well to do it. Uh, just one thing on NHS prescription because I know uh, there are one or two people you know, some of some people who are on, you know, on repeat prescriptions. Apparently, you can pay to get an NHS prescription repayment certificate. And what that means is you pay a one-off fee which covers prescriptions for up to three months or more. So if you, are, if, if you keep going back and have to be paying that, how much do you pay? So instead of paying that every time, if you get a prescription certificate, that will work for three months and you pay it once, and then that also will save you money. If you're struggling with debt, please call the National Debt Helpline. The Citizens Advice Bureau is there. Christian Against Poverty are there to help people who are getting into debt. Don't bury your head in the sand. Don't pray against your lenders, Lord. Fire, Father, destroy them. The prayers God won't answer. No, He won't destroy them. You owe them. You need to pay. So please seek help, get help, so that you can move yourself forward out of that, out of that situation. Anything else to need? Um, I, I think it's just for us to just, I guess for me to family, um, there is the way we are, uh, the way we operate is different. But I believe there's something you can do to yes. increase your income and actually reduce your outgoing. Okay. We are in a time where God has given us wisdom and we cannot, we cannot just say, oh, oh we do things the way the world does it. Remember the first thing, the first ritual, uh, the first foundation we made about being a way, that there is a way is the fact that listen to God. Mm. God will begin. One of the things we didn't talk about is increasing the cost is investment. Invest, invest, invest. Well, we said that with Isaac. Yes. That you need to oh, invest. Yes. yes. So, which is one of the how to increase income. If you, if you, if you look at probably a, look at a, a, a trend, probably even the cryptocurrency that is, that is known now, mm. there is an um, ISA, a different thing, stocks. We cannot say because we don't have enough for bread, mm. we eat everything. Sorry. Because if we eat everything, there will be no seed for the future. No the future. So it's, it's still a time to cut our expenses, mm. increase our income, yeah. and out of that income, it's not for us to go on set spending spree. Mm. It's to yes, we, we will have we will have good times, go on holidays, but out of that invest. Let all this invest in the future. Thank you, thank you. And um, I don't know if there's any question, please feel free to put it on the chat as we begin to round up for today. Um, so uh, this again has been brought to you by Transformation Sanctuary International, where we're committed to victorious living 
and Christ's likeness. Okay, Christ's likeness. And we hope you found it useful. This video will be saved on our Facebook account, Transformation Sanctuary International, at Transformation Sanctuary International, and on our YouTube channel. And all our messages and our Bible studies are on our YouTube channel. Please feel free to check it out. Please feel free to subscribe, like our messages, and click on the notification buttons. And if I'm dropping a new video on YouTube, you know exactly what is happening in our world, and which will be a huge blessing of huge blessing to you. Now, these online events happen periodically, so we're going to have another one again uh, in a matter of months. But before the next month, we've got uh, uh, an event, but this one is a physical event, and it's our summer barbecue, our summer barbecue here in Reina, and it's going to take place on the 9th of July. On the 9th of July, there'll be there'll be a free barbecue and drinks for everyone. There'll be face painting, there'll be fancy castle for children, there'll be music, there'll be zumba dance, and much more. So it's an afternoon when you can forget about the prices for once and come and have your meal of free barbecue. We've got this guy who is excellent. So you're not going to be eating burnt of food. It will be excellently done. So please feel free to come with the family, come with the children, come let them have fun on the day. That's on the night of July here in Raynham. If you need us to send you Raynham UK, if you need us to send you the leaflet, we forward it, we forward it round to you. Otherwise, on Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., we hold our services at the Royal Youth Centre here in Raynham. And on Thursday, we have attended our Bible study on Thursday before. Please feel free to join us. We'll be blessed. At the moment, we're studying the book of Revelation, and we are seeing stuff, lots of stuff in there. And if you join us, I trust God that you are going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. Uh, that brings us nicely to the end of our program, unless there's any questions from anyone, any clarification, anything you felt, or can you please explain this more? Or, oh, I do this actually, and it saves me money. Does anybody have any of such before we, before we call it a day? So what's your key takeaway from today? Um, my key takeaway is to shop on Thursdays. You shop on Thursdays. Um, usually I, 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 I wash things, I wash in the evening, so I yeah. There was one more, which is uh, um, buy a flyer. Mm. Not sure about that. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Buy a flyer. Not sure about that. Um, mm. And yeah. um, something like fried like, chicken. The so. last one for mm -hmm. me is not to take my husband shopping with me when I need to go shopping. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is good. If you have any key takeaways, can you please put it in the chat? What are you taking away? Can you tell us one thing, one thing you're taking away today? So we just know if this has been useful to you and all that. Um, anything you're taking away? One thing you're taking away? Um, anything, anyone? Uh, what's my key takeaway? Uh, I like that last one. <laughs> Don't go shopping with me. Well, I'll take your card for of course, you know, ah. after doing an event like this, I, mm -hmm. I won't be free for it. Of course, oh, yes, 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 definitely, definitely. I think one thing was seriously. I think one thing one for me is soon in the time of panic. I think that's important. It's so easy to panic at this time and to try to flight and remember flight and flight, yeah, flight and flight. So it's so, so easy to do that now. We must listen to God and do what He wants us to do. All right. So yes, the risk takeaway is to watch our expenses. And not to buy things on impulse. Thank you. Yeah, not to buy things on impulse. Thanks, Dorothy, that you found it informative. That's good. Um, so, see, checking out goings. Yes, checking out goings. I mean, that's, that's the first important. All right. Um, thanks, everyone. Thank it's been really, really useful. Thanks for joining us. And watch out for our next session again. I've got an idea in mind right now.
Facing children, pros and cons. Hmm. What to think about? We'll keep that for next time. But thanks for joining us tonight. God bless you and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what you said that. You said thank you. You said thank you for joining us tonight. Thank that was what you said. Oh. And that was thanks for joining us this afternoon, this morning, this evening. Don't be silly. Bye. 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 Bye.